Hey y'all, in this video, I'm gonna give you 20 questions that you should be able to answer in order to validate a product, a business idea, or just a random project idea that you have and you wanna bring into reality. There'll be a ton of realistic examples along the way, so make sure to stay tuned until the end. Let's get started. See, I grew up in a small business family, so I know what it's like to have a thousand questions. Before we get started, my name is Trog and this is Entrykey, where I take high level business concepts, really geek out over them and then try to explain them to you so that you could spend more time on actually developing your business. Sounds like something you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that little bell thingy as well. In this video, we're going to go over five areas, value add, current industry, team, creation and resources. In each one of these sections, I'm gonna give you a series of questions that you should be able to answer in order to really flesh out and validate your idea. By the end of this exercise, you'll either have a very you know, thought out plan on how you're gonna exactly tackle your idea and bring it into reality, or you'll identify areas where you need to really flesh out the plan even further before you take the next step. Keep in mind that anyone can use these 20 questions whenever they need to validate any idea. You could be a college student who's about to pitch in their first pitch competition, or you could be someone who's a seasoned small business owner or an entrepreneur, and you're just looking to add an extra product or pivot your business in some way. Let's go ahead and get started. For each one of these sections, I've created a hypothetical business so I can lead you through the sections and really give you a better understanding of the questions. So in value add, you're trying to essentially answer the major question of what is it that you're trying to solve? And you start doing that by first answering, well, who is your customer? But actually getting a very deep understanding. Who are they? Where do they work? What did they do? How much do they make? What are their interests? Where do they live? Where are they going to find my product? Getting an extremely deep understanding of your customer will allow you to pivot your product as time goes on to better reach their needs. The next question to then ask is, well, what problem are you solving for your target audience? And really getting this down into just two to three sentences. If you're pitching your idea or explaining it to someone, you want to spend as much time on the solution, but you want to have your problem really fleshed out so you're actually able to get them to imagine, okay, this is a problem worth solving. The third question to then ask yourself is, well, what's the benefit of your product or your service? So every problem has like millions of different solutions. Why is it that your solution is the one that you're pushing forward? Why not go with any of the other possible solutions? Next question to ask yourself is, oh, what makes my product or service special within my industry? In the last question, we said that a lot of problems have many solutions. And you pick one of the solutions over all the other solutions. Why is it that within that special field that you've chosen, that your product is better than your competitor's product or special or different than your competitor's product. For the example that we're going to use, say you're facing lower back pain and you're a company that wants to release back ache relief pads, right? Those heating pads are the ones with the solution that help you sort of numb the pain and keep working. So the way that you might answer these questions is starting off with saying, well, our target customer is someone who's between the ages of 30 to 40 years old. They don't make more than $100,000 a year, so they can't afford back surgery. However, they do work at a job that requires them to sit around for at least six to seven hours, thus leading to the lower back pain. And they're looking for something that's quick, easy, that they can use after work and then even throw on underneath their clothes and then go to work. The problem we solve is this lower back pain that they're facing. The benefit of our product versus something like surgery is that ours is low cost and will allow them to keep going on with their day without having to take a large break from work. What makes our product special compared to our competitors is our special gel that has extra healing powers. What's the problem that I'm solving for them? What's the field of the solution that I'm taking for this option? And lastly, how am I different compared to the competition within my field? The second section is then going over the current industry. In this section, you're trying to answer the major question, what's already out there? First question you answer is who is your initial customer? In the last section, we went over, well, who's your target or ideal customer? Sometimes it can be tough to get to that ideal customer immediately. When you talk about your initial customer, you kind of ask yourself, well, who is the easiest for me to be able to target? Who is most likely to be able to take a chance on this new product or this new idea? Most times, this is the people that are most frustrated with all the other options that are already out there. So they're more willing to take a chance on a new idea or a new product. The second question to ask yourself is what kind of industry am I entering? What are the characteristics of it? Is it fast moving? Is there a lot of regulation? Is it somewhere where the customers expect a whole lot of handholding? Really getting an understanding of like, well, okay, what am I really signing up for? The third question to ask yourself is, what are there going to be barriers to enter this industry? Is it expensive to get started? Do I need to get some sort of licensing? Are there going to be fees to get started? The fourth question to ask yourself is, well, who are the major players? There's always going to be competition. And in fact, having competition is usually a good sign that your idea is worth pursuing because there's actually demand out there for it. But who are the major players and how much control do they have over the industry? Are they big enough to make big sweeping changes and immediately change the industry? Or are they competitive because of one specific thing? Or is there something that they're lacking that's causing frustration with their customers? 
you can capitalize on that. And lastly, how much demand is there actually out there for my solution? Are people already really satisfied with the solutions out there? Is there something that I can do to make my solution a little better or my product a little better? Can I actually identify a real number of people that I can expect to buy this product? For this section, let's use the example of you wanting to start a bakery. So the first question, who's my initial customer? Well, I know that my target audience is gonna be individuals that are between the ages of 16 to 25 years old, because they'll spend a bunch of time in the cafe with their friends, thus buying a bunch of expensive coffees and stuff. But in order to get them in, I know my initial customer is probably gonna be the rush hour individuals in the morning that are going to work and need some coffee really quickly. So when I start off, I'm gonna first target on creating these really fast services that can give coffee to people who are in a rush. And I slowly start removing my business into actually inviting more and more younger generations in. There are barriers to enter this industry. I'm gonna to have to register with the county. I'm gonna to have to get a bunch of fees and certifications done. I'm gonna to have to find a physical location. I'm gonna keep up with inspections. It's gonna be pretty expensive to buy that initial equipment such as ovens or coffee makers. The major players in my industry are companies like Starbucks. However, there is no Starbucks in my neighborhood. In my neighborhood, the major players are restaurant owners, but no one is in the field of offering baked goods and coffee. And I know that there's a bunch of demand for my solution in the neighborhood because it's full of working class people and gets a ton of foot traffic because of all the offices that are nearby. So who's that low hanging customer that you're gonna first target? What are the characteristics of the industry you're entering? Are there barriers or how hard is it gonna be for you to enter that industry? Are there big competitors out there or are there pretty much small competitors and can they quickly turn into big competitors? And lastly, are you sure that there's a solid amount of demand for your solution? So for the third section, we're gonna talk about team. But the major question for this is, well, who are you and why does that matter? The first question to ask yourself is, well, who's on your immediate team? Who is working on this project with you? What is their stake in the project? The second question to ask yourself is, what does each person bring to the team? Some people bring skills, some people bring capital. Some people just are there because they're great people for you to work with. Actually get an understanding of, well, what are the strengths and weaknesses of each individual? The third question is, well, what skill set are we missing? Hey, we have a bunch of people who can do X thing, but we also need someone who can do Y thing, which takes us into our fourth question. Can we upskill or do we need more people? So when you say that we have a bunch of people that can do X, but we need someone who could do Y, well, can one of those people learn how to do why? Or is that something that you're gonna have to actually find someone to help you do? For this section, let's use the example of a social media marketing agency. You might say something along the lines of, I am X and I'm co-founding this business with Y. The skills that I bring to this is that I've had a large amount of experience of X plus years in the digital marketing field. And my co-founder is actually a social media influencer to begin with, so they understand how to work with other influencers. While we both have a lot of experience in digital marketing and working with influencers, we don't have much experience in actually developing a business or the technical side of developing a website and handling payments. So I can learn a lot of the business side of things by watching people like Entrykey and their amazing videos, but we are gonna need to bring in someone else who can actually handle the technical side of setting up our website and helping us automate things. So who are we exactly? What do we each bring to the team? What are we missing? Can we handle that? Or do we need someone else as well? The fourth section is creation. And in this section, you're essentially trying to answer the question, what will it take to take my idea from my mind to the paper and then into reality? The first question you're gonna ask is what do we need to develop? Do we need to develop some sort of prototype? Do we need to actually reach out to a manufacturer? Do we need to create an MVP product? Do we need to create a beta test? What is it actually gonna to take to get us started? And how are we gonna actually go ahead and get started? Now, the second question there is, well, how do we actually provide the product or service that we want to get to our customers? Is this something that people are going to sign up for and we're going to go and give an appointment? Is this something that people can go buy from like a Walmart or a store? Is this something that they're going to have to log in? Do we need to create a website for them to be able to access this product or this service? Lastly, how are we going to protect our idea? Do we need to file for a trademark? Do we need to file for a patent? For this section, let's use the example of you starting a t-shirt business. You might start by saying, well, we need to develop a website where people can come and buy these t-shirts. We also need to develop a sort of warehouse where we're gonna keep all our t-shirts, but also that where we can actually create and print the t-shirts as well. Then you might say, in order to physically provide the product or service, we're thinking about partnering up with certain brands like TJ Maxx or Macy's. Or you might just say, hey, we're gonna sell all e-commerce, but we need to create Amazon accounts, eBay accounts, and we need to create a Shopify account to actually create the website. Lastly, to say, how am I gonna protect my idea? You might say, well, we're gonna actually first go ahead and file for an LLC or for a C Corp. And then we're gonna look into actually getting trademarks on all our big major designs that we really care a lot about. The last section is resources. You're pretty much just asking yourself, well, what do I need to get started and actually keep existing? First question to ask yourself is, well, how much funding is it going to take to get started? Do you have equipment that you need to buy? Do you need to hire people? Do you need to quit your job? So do you need a salary to do this? The second question to ask yourself is, well, how much time will that initial phase take? Every business always has an initial phase. You're creating an app, you're gonna have the first beta test. You're creating a t-shirt business, you're gonna start off with one t-shirt. You're creating a bakery, you're gonna go out and actually buy the physical location, fix up the location, buy all the equipment that you need. 
So that initial phase of getting the business set up and running, how long is that going to take? Because that's usually going to be your most expensive and sort of hardest part where you're going to actually have to motivate yourself to keep going, keep going until you're able to finish that and get your first sale. The third question to ask yourself is what's the likely timeline and milestones that I want to see? What is that first stage? How quickly will I finish it? What is the next phase going to be like? How will I know that I'm succeeding if I'm meeting these certain milestones that I've set up for myself? The last question to ask yourself is, well, what can cause disruptions to my plan? I personally have a mentality that I always wish for the best, but I'm always prepared for the worst. So you're pretty much asking yourself, what are things that I can imagine will in the future might cause problems? If this happens and this goes wrong, and then this is how I'm planning on handling that issue. This is how I'm planning on actually fixing that situation and moving forward. For this one, let's use the example of you creating a habit tracking app. Right? You might say something along the lines of, well, we need to get started. The first phase of this idea will be creating an MVP, a basic test bomb product that we will then share with the beta testers. For funding, we're going to need X amount of dollars to be able to actually create the app. Then we're going to have hosting fees. Then we're probably going to pay people to be part of our beta test to begin with. We have certain fees that we need to cover in order to get listed on all the app stores. Now, the likely timeline is that this initial beta test will take us six months to get done. Then after that, we plan on rolling it out to a wider sort of audience and moving into Android and iOS and a web application as well at these certain interval times. And one disruption that we can immediately imagine is that our beta test might take longer than we're expecting. In case that happens, what we're going to do is we're going to set aside 30% of our initial funds just for the likelihood in case we do need those funds in the end. How much funding will I need to get started? How much time will that initial phase take? What is the likely timeline and milestone so I know that I'm succeeding? And lastly, what are some problems I can anticipate and my potential solutions to them to begin with? Okay, so that was 20 questions that you should be able to answer anytime you're trying to test the feasibility of an idea or if you're trying to pitch a new idea to a friend or someone that you're trying to bring onto your team. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to have a conversation with all of you. Also, take a moment to introduce yourself in the comments and sort of talk about the project or business that you're working on. Let's all connect and sort of help each other out. Once again, my name's Trog. This is Entropy. I take high level business concepts, geek out over them, and then try to share them with you so you can spend more time on actually growing your businesses. Sounds like something you're interested in. Hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification thingy, and we'll see you at the next video.